Welcome back. Today we are going to be addressing a video by Justin Riley Apple Dennis on the subject of biases within language. We like to think of language as a neutral medium for communicating ideas. It's just a tool. It can communicate our biases, but it doesn't have any biases of its own, right? Well, one can certainly argue from the position of how the language has evolved within a particular society or region. But as a lot of people abide dictionary definitions, I would say that language for the most part as a whole is not biased or contains no bias. I don't think so. I think language can be extremely biased, even when people don't intend for it to be. Even when people don't intend it to be. At this point in a human species existence, you either need to evolve past the point for verbal communication, or accept the fact that Magog and I are going to utterly annihilate all of you in 2020. And that's because language is complicated, and the words that we use to describe things are not born out of thin air, they're created by people. Fantastic. Now what's your point? And we all have different experiences with language that lead us to have different connotations for certain words. Which is why dictionaries and thesauruses exist. So not only do we know all the definitions, but we also know all the different variations or other words to carry the same meaning. The only thing that really matters is context. So a word that I think is neutral might have a really negative connotation for someone else. Maybe they've only heard that word used in a negative way, whereas I don't really have a connection to that word. And it's not helpful that words are constantly changing meaning. While a word may have a different meaning for someone else, it doesn't in any way mean someone else, the person saying the word that the other person is interpreting as negative, should in any way change their language style to suit the person who sees it negatively. Oh, and if anyone's thinking of a word so far that fits this, Try gender for 10 points. New meanings for words are always slipping into our vocabulary while others fade away. So while we can all usually agree on what words mean, every person is going to have a different perception of the different levels of connotations in a word. You know, I might have a genius way to resolve this. To the people who only see a word negatively, it might be an idea you go educate yourself. Use Google if you must. That way, you will be able to understand that words have or quite a number of words have, a positive and negative connotation, depending on context. Some words might seem suggestive to some people while they seem completely innocent to others. We're not robots that take in words and understand them devoid of context or tone or past experience. We are humans and we're messy and we all interpret things differently. See previous comment and act upon it. Like, there are people who throw around the word cunt super casually, they call their friends cunts, and their friends call them cunts, and it's just kind of joking and friendly. This must be aimed at those convicts. I mean, Australians, sorry. But there are also people who feel nauseous just hearing the word and don't want anything to do with it. From what I've heard, there's only one word that makes people nauseous. Mm, moist. Or discharge. Or penetration. Like, if you've only ever been called a cunt by your best friend when they were laughing and joking with you, you might have a pretty positive connotation for it. But if you were in an abusive relationship where your abuser called you a cunt regularly, you'd probably have a much more negative experience with it. So I understand what you're trying to say, but you've yet to make your point about biases. This particular example isn't a very valid one if you're going to go down the other path that I fully expect you to go down, because let's face it, the extremes you presented, friends and abusive relationships, aren't the same as whatever delicate crap it is you're about to talk about. And because of that, it's important that we recognize that our language is not neutral. And even though you might be fine with a word, that doesn't mean that everyone else will be too. Yes, and as I've already stated, this is where context comes into play. If the other person hearing the word, though, only hears the one definition of that word and acts upon it in a negative way, it is not down to the person who originally said the offensive word to change their language style or apologize. This applies to a lot of words in the LGBT plus community as well. Like, lots of people have really negative connotations with the word faggot, and they just want to stay as far away from it as possible. I am not a member of the LGBTQIA, PP, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, blah, blah, blah community, and yet I use the word faggot at least once a week. You see, faggots to me are a delicacy. They're something you have for dinner with mashed potato and gravy. They are delicious. There is nothing more appealing to me 
than having two bowls of faggots in my mouth. But other people have decided to reclaim it and often use it to refer to themselves, giving it a more positive connotation. And I think we have to have space for all of these experiences to exist, because you can't just change how people feel about a word. I'm glad that you agree that two separate meanings for one word should be given space to exist. I disagree that someone who only sees a word one way can't really change their mind, unless they're one of those bloody-minded types. In which case, give up on them. Connotations run deep and aren't easy to change. Some people might be able to reclaim certain words, but for others, the scars just run too deep. For another LGBT plus example, there are a lot of girls who like girls who avoid the word lesbian and just call themselves gay. And there's nothing wrong with that, like people are allowed to identify however they want, but one of the main reasons I hear for that is that lesbian as a word has become too sexualized. It has a sexual connotation for a lot of people. Interestingly enough, this idea of having two words for homosexuality had actually, for the longest time, confused me. I never knew why they had to be two different words. I did a little digging, and while there are references that go back to like the 17th century with the word lesbian and its current definition somewhat, you have sodomy that goes back millennia, but the idea of identities don't go back that far, they only go back as far as the 19th century. I still don't know why there has to be two words. Still, there are girls who identify as lesbians who don't feel that connotation as strongly. That's why people identify their own sexuality, and we shouldn't put those labels on people, because even though we know the definitions of words, we don't know how they might resonate with different people. Just as an interesting aside, I mentioned this little bit about how some lesbians call themselves gay instead of lesbian to a friend of mine, and he said to me, isn't it interesting that even with homosexuality, girls encroach upon things that are for men? <laughs> He had a point. Another way that this manifests itself is in how we talk about certain groups of people. The thing is, what we call people says a lot about our opinion of them. Sometimes there's one agreed upon name for a group that everybody uses, but often there are two or more names for a particular group. One for people who support it, and one for people who oppose it. Oh, you mean like NTSJWs, anti-feminists, are often labeled fascists, racists, white supremacists, misogynists, bigots, are there any others? Murderers, probably? Honestly. Which is rather interesting because I don't know many people within those particular groups, or those that identify with those labels, that would openly say they are any of them, because their perception is that they are not any of them. Some of them perceive it that way. Not all, after all. For instance, in the debate over abortion, people who are for abortion rights tend to call themselves pro-choice, while those opposed to abortion rights tend to call themselves pro-life. But those terms are obviously loaded. No one wants to call themselves anti-choice or anti-life, usually. Even just saying abortion rights can be loaded language because opponents of abortion rights would probably just say they're anti-abortion, not anti-abortion rights. I can't be the only person that thinks you're overcomplicating a very simple process, or decision, choice, whatever. To me, you are either pro-life, and therefore anti-abortion, which is fine, I don't see it as an inherently bad thing to say you're against abortion, that is your choice. I think the only part where it gets a bit blurry is when you say you're pro-choice, because then saying you're anti-life isn't really the correct term. Not sure if it's loaded though. ISIS is another common example. I say ISIS because I think that's the name most people know it by, but they're also called ISIL or Daesh. Daesh has a really pejorative connotation to it, which is why the UK and France have been calling them that, even though officially they just call themselves the Islamic State. It's a way of insulting them just by using a different name. This is one of those times where I actually have to side with my government. To me, insulting them in such a manner is, while petty, also funny. I'm all for calling them Daesh or ISIL or ISIS. Or, and if anyone can think of an acronym for it, BACON. I, I would like to call them BACON, but I can't think of an acronym off the top of my head that works. If you can think of one, put it in the chat and I will pin it. With all of these different terms, news organizations often struggle to find words that are genuinely not biased. Which is why the majority of news outlets I regularly look at for lols have given up entirely and are quite happy to put their biases on show. In the US, we actually have a problem with news outlets calling neo-Nazis and white supremacists more politically acceptable terms like white nationalist or alt-right. I guess in this instance it just depends on the publication whether they want to put the words neo-Nazi on the front cover, or whether they'd rather use the softer words white nationalist or alt-right whether it be correct or not. A lot of news organizations don't know if it's okay to use a word that might be kind of pejorative for a group that is obviously vile, or if they still need to find something neutral. Just because I want to add the other side to this. 
if we're going to add, for example, Antifa, because we should, they are a vile group, we should just call them fascists or communists, neither of which are pejorative terms. I'd argue that finding something neutral in that instance is normalizing them. I think awful things should be condemned, even by news organizations that try to remain unbiased. Which news organizations are you reading that is normalizing the alt-right, or the white nationalists, or the neo-Nazis? Kind of glad you said neo-Nazi and not Nazi. That would have derailed this conversation ever so slightly. Now, as to whether or not it normalizes them, I disagree. I believe you are assigning in this instance a political leaning or label, and we're not normalizing them, we are stating who they are. It's more like identifying them. That applies, in most cases, to political leanings, which a lot of these people have that are on the right. Unlike Antifa, which are so far left, honestly, you can't see them anymore. And this crosses over into a lot of other stuff as well, not just news organizations. SJW has been becoming more popular and mainstream as a term, which is weird because it's just a pejorative for feminists and people who care about civil rights and social justice issues. You say social justice warrior is someone pursuing or fighting for civil rights, but that's not what they're doing. If we look, for example, at the internet, we notice all they do is spend their entire life obsessing over a cartoon bear. But it's by no means a positive or even a neutral word. It has a derogatory connotation to it. When you call someone an SJW, it's implying that their views are ridiculous, that fighting for social justice is ridiculous. You can't use the term SJW to describe other people and claim to be unbiased. It is a very biased term. I know very few people who actually call themselves SJWs, and those who do usually do so because they were called it so often that they chose to reclaim it and own it. For the most part, social justice warriors are ridiculous. Their views are ridiculous. Their methods are ridiculous, and to those that have simply owned it, good for you. I never bothered to own the anti-feminist label, no matter how many times I get called it. I've never bothered to own the anti-SGW label, no matter how many times I've been called it, nor the skeptic clone one. Okay, okay, I own that one. Mug. Exhibit A. But there is a label I will gladly accept. Your. Future. Supreme. Leader along with paedophiles and people that abuse animals, SJWs will go first in the purge. But at the end of the day, you can tell someone's biases from if they use that word or not. Likewise, how someone refers to a trans person is a giveaway of their biases. If there's a trans woman who uses she, her pronouns, and someone intentionally uses he, him pronouns to describe her, they are showing their anti-trans bias. Like that isn't entirely true. Someone could have done it by accident. That person shouldn't then be punished to the point where they almost lose their job. I just think all of this is really fascinating and not really talked about that much. Like, I think we all know that words have connotations, but I've been in so many arguments where people vehemently believe that a certain word has a certain connotation or that it's neutral, and I just 100% do not see it that way. I would love to see you have one of these arguments in a debate form preferably, or discussion with someone you vehemently disagree with. Let's start with that often obsessed bear. He has a rather large platform, and I'm sure he would love to have a chat with you. I would too, but I'm, I'm a minnow, and even though a lot of those SJWs are much smaller than I am, they're only interested in the big fish. 